Hello, welcome to Poppy's Creations. I'm just about to uh, film my video for this weekend, and I thought first of all I would share you something that um, someone gave me yesterday. Um, I met up with one of my loyal viewers, um, Adam and Mark. I've just bought a house not too far from here and so I went to see them yesterday he'd bought some things over from the UK for me like a huge bag of tea bags and then he said I've got these here would you like to see what, see what you can use from them and it was two like picnic baskets um, just full of goodies um, I salivated at the thought of what I was going to be able to do with them so now I'm going to show them to you Okay, first of all, we've got a lovely little picnic basket. Right, what else have we got? This, oh, this is this will always be handy. I shall put that into a, a roll later. Some ve Velcro or ho hook and loop, as they call it. There's some metal butterflies. How sweet are they? Um, I did think, actually, looking at these now. <coughs> I did a quick look last night at these and I'm, I'm wondering if they might be good enough to maybe spray paint or even leave them as they are and attach them to the fence in the garden. I th think they'd look quite nice. So that's good. There's four of those. And if anybody knows what this tool is, that's for rug making. I've already got one of these but it's always good to have spares of anything so that in case if the other one does break essential it's an elastic this is uh obviously was this was dressmakers pins but obviously they're, they're it's been around a little while so there's not there's not much left in there but i'll add those to my pins there's a nice reel of cotton which will go well on my um my thread holder behind my machine. Some nice white Gutterman's fabric, uh, fabric thread, and another nice white thread. What else have we got? Some curtain tape. I, I probably won't need that to be perfectly honest because I have got a huge reel of that, same size that I've. I, I've got as I'm going to need it and it's, it's gone a little bit frayed that one unless I can come up with some master plan of what to use it for now this obviously is more pins now this is magnetic and I th I think it's quite likely that it it was probably meant to go on the machine I don't know if it will go on mine because it's plastic oh that's a shame I might be able to attach, attach it with some double-sided tape though and then I can put it on there and then if I need to put any pins on there as I'm working that'd be worth trying got some lovely bits of fabric that's lovely isn't it so that's one there these will all go in my stash of course oh this seems to be it's a scarf. Oh, we can just imagine what I might might do with that, can't you? Now, how pretty is that little piece? I can imagine that actually making a nice little purse. So it's got my imagination juices going already. And this one, apples. Ah, so some sort of so ah, it's, it what it's a kit for a for a wash bag. Not seen one of those before. I wonder if I can figure that out. It might work, be worth actually just doing what it's meant for. Now what have we got? Ah, now this this is a darning needle of types. I think probably for uh, sewing knitting together or crochet or something but that'll also be quite good for 
uh, threaded an elastic through something and put it through there and and thread through if it'll uh, if I can I'll have to tape the elastic to that but that's definitely going in my tool kit knitting needles size five millimeter now look at that now I think these are probably a very good quality scissors nice metal and I reckon if I sharpen them they could be very good I shall try them later nice and then we've got some randomly some crystals that you'd have on a chandelier so I think they will go in my bead stash in one of my jars with my beads in I'll put that there for later there's another one now I now I, I decide gotta decide now whether to use this for storage or whether to donate it. I don't know yet, but I'll put those uh yeah, I'll put them back in here for now. I'll, I'll actually start putting things away properly later. Move the scissors out because I want to try those. So I'll find them homes later. Pop this up. And now this basket not quite as, as useful because it's lost its, its class but we've got lots of fabrics in here by the looks of things look at that some lovely white I expect it's polyester but I'd imagine that will make it's a tablecloth but I can imagine that being a very nice top not, yeah but there's quite a bit there so there must be something I can make with that another bit of fabric what's this one? Oh, we've got oh, no these are in like samples that's a nice these are nice I don't know if you can tell from that but they're quite sort of lininy if that's a word <laughs> and there are some more pieces there here Lots of sam sample size pieces again. Again, nice colours. This this would actually probably work quite well all put together to make something. Lovely colours. Next we've got... Oh, ah, it's a bit... It's not a, is it a thistle? I don't really know. Is that, is that an actual what I would think of as th a thistle or is it just from something else? Let's see if it says. It says it's printed in the UK so it could be thistle. It's a nice thing. I'm not quite sure what. I can imagine cushions as usual being me but I, I would like to come up with something different, a bit more original. More curtain tape, so I don't really need curtain tape. Oh, look at that, that's a lovely hook. Looks like it was bought and never used. I'm sure I can find a use for that. Ah, someone tried or started to make something out of this because it's obviously because of the shapes, oh the circles they've got there, I wonder what was made with that and even so I'll cut that into a neat square and that'll be another bit of fabric could be used ah now this is sweet we've got hearts that's quite a nice size piece as well so what I'm going to do I think is iron these out and then put them away tidy in my box this is an old pillowcase. I'm not sure I have use for that either because I've got quite a lot of those. Could use it as rags, I suppose. Ah, look at that. How beautiful is that? Oh, the creative juices are flowing. Oh, this is, oh, I like the look of this. 
lovely pastel colours and a similar sort of pattern as look at that. Oh, I want to make something. Another nice fabric here as well. Looks like it might, it might have been a sample. Hundred percent cotton. I'm surprised. That is lovely. It feels quite silky, almost like it couldn't be cotton, but it it is. Ah, love this. I do like this as well. Oh. Next, we've got. Oh, this feels like a bigger. A bigger chunk. Oh, this is very retro looking. Is it someone called Orla Keeley that makes a similar sort of pattern to this? Very popular at the moment. It's called Autumn Leaves. Again, it's, this one's printed in the UK. That's another nice one. What have you done to me, Adam? You've given me more things be tempted to make more of the crystals more curtain tape that one's in slightly better condition I might hang on to that a little bit oh that's a sweet little thing that's, that would make a nice lining for something or anything as usual is a nice sort of a dusky pinky lilac colour with polka dots. It's very linen -y as well. I can't believe there's so much into a little basket. Now this one oh that's nice. Yep. It's a little bit, a bit, a bit of a scrap of that one. What is it called? Again, it's made in the UK. These will only be, I have to cut those into squares and I could use them for scraps, but it's a lovely piece of fabric again. more of the green one. I'd love to see what they made with that. Oh, got a needle. I got my scrap bag. Some more scraps that need tidying up for use. What have we got left here? Oh, I know what's in here. This is a weight um, some of you know who make curtains that sometimes you need a weight in the corner of the curtain and I I did put weights in some curtains I made for someone actually but um, I don't know whether it's actually a weight whether it's a coin but it's heavy enough that it can weight a curtain nicely and lastly we've got beads nice beads oh, they're a bit tangled but there's some nice beads there that I shall put into my bead collection well again thank you very much adam and mark so that's uh there's something for me more more for me to do to tidy these fabrics up and yep decide what more use i can give them If you're, if you're an avid sewer or crafter like I am, I dare say you'd you'd like to have been given those baskets as well. So I hope you enjoyed that. Now I'm going to get on and film what I started to do. <laughs> See you in the video. As uh, regular viewers will know, my name's Jan. I'm to upcycle, recycle. 
fabrics and anything else that I can find that I've acquired or been given, usually from charity shops or boot fairs, vigreniers, anything like that. Things I can try and give a second life. And also I uh, try to recycle my own wardrobe, as in the clothes in it, not what, what's <laughs> what they're stored in. So today I've done one that you will have seen if you saw me showing in oh, a while back now where I showed you the clothes that I've recycled. Um, this has come out of my project basket, which again I showed you in another video what, what I was hoping to do with things. And this one is um, a camisole top and then a, I had a, a scarf that I've um, made in to make it a sort of long, a thigh, thigh length sort of top. And I have to say, it's a fairly quick project, quite simple because quite a lot of the work's already done for, for you because the top is already made and the edges of the scarf are already hemmed, so there's no hemming to do there. So I, I'll show you in stills where I've cut the top to length and I've cut the scarf to how I want it. Um, I'll just show you now, let's just put push my machine out of the way. Just quickly, I say I'll show you in the stills anyway. This is the camisole top. So as you can see, I've shortened it so that it comes just under the bust. And I've surged around the edges. So that, that's all ready to go. Again, I'll show you in the photos. And I chose this scarf in the end. It's nice, nice sort of bright orange. And what I've done, because it was going to be quite a lot too long, I've cut it sort of not down the middle, but it's like two thirds and then a little bit. So I've got a, like a layered look. So I've got a short piece and a long piece on top, one on top of the other. So you can just about see there. So I've got that layer and that layer. And then I've surged all, all around the edge of that. That definitely needed doing because it was definitely going to fray. And now I've already gone through and basted a gathering stitch. So you can see that as well. So what I've got to do now is spread those gathers out quite evenly. And what I'll tell you as well, I'll show you in the photo, but I was given a tip not too long ago to use dental floss To do gathering because it's got like a a waxy um, finish to it it glides through the fabric a lot easier and now having having done it I I know that to be true and it, it's much easier so I'm now just touching that I've pulled it back out of gather but I I'll, I'll get it gathered and then what I've, I could either put that on the outside as a frill on the front or I'll do it so that it's inside and it's just a flush top. Um, I quite like the idea of the gathered top because the stitching I've got is black, so that will go with the camisole anyway. So uh, I'll get myself set up and I can tell you this is going to be very quick this time. Okay, I lied. <laughs> Off camera, I suddenly thought to myself, oh, I've got to tack this on. So um, that took a little while, just being careful to tack it on. And what I've, as I say, I've decided to sew it on so the frill was on the outside. So now what the challenge is, I'm going to sew it on. And I'm using a zigzag because this, the top is stretchy. <clears throat> I'm using a zigzag so that it hopefully will enable it to still move. And then at some point, I will try it on and show you how it looks. Um, and we will see. To say a zigzag, I've used a stretch needle and I'm going to use a zigzag so fingers crossed that it will all turn out okay in the end. I'm using a, a size four as for the the uh, size of the zigzag as well. So, in fact, I think I'll go, I'll go a little bit bigger on the length as well. Um, I'm just going to 
Right, let's try. Yeah, that's better. Just want to make sure I've got the length and the width of the stitch how I wanted it. The last thing I want is for the stitches to be too close together and it not stretch. Right, keep everything crossed, everybody. Let's get this under the set. I'm just going to try and do a, it's about a centimetre, half an inch from the edge of the surged edge. I'm take my time because I want to make sure that the gathers lay flat. Yeah, it took me quite a while, as I say, to um, to tack it, but it's worth doing because otherwise it'll just wander everywhere. I did that quite a small uh, tack, uh, tack in stitch as well, or basting, whatever you call it. It's Friday again. Sharon will be here in a little while. Let's see what we're going to make together. I think she's got a few projects in mind that I might help her with. If not, if she's confident to get on her own, I'll, I'll find something else to do. Incidentally, I lost two point, was it two point three, I think, kilo this week. I haven't added it up, but I think it's, it must be quite a bit by now. The challenge after this is to... Um, Take all the tacking or basting stitches out and the gathering stitch. It might take a little while because obviously as I'm sewing, it's sewing over the top of it. So this turns out okay. I'm going to be another top I can use this uh, summer. If it's, I mean, I, I think, I mean, I've got, I think I've got a little black. Bolero cardigan that I could wear with it if it's not very hot. So I'm sure it'll get used somehow. There we go. I don't know if you can see up close. It, um, I haven't taken the tacking or anything out yet, but you can just see what I mean about the gather. And you can see the two layers. I mean, I think that's quite pretty. So, uh, as I say, the more sheer and fiddly the fabric, the, the, it's, you have to be that bit more careful. There's a the couple of patch paces I've noticed that I've missed with the serger, so I'll put them back under the machine and just do that like that piece um, so I think next time I know to be very very careful with that another thing of um, what I did uh, think I probably could have done was put tape double-sided tape all the way around wonder tape as whatever they call it and then put that on before attacking but to hold it in place but I managed it that's fine but as always if it's a very very slippery fabric it's worth considering that I will uh, try it on and then I'll give a quick still photo of it on me, fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you next time. Bye.